We're going to start uh, one by one, and we'll begin with the three papers that um, is a mixture of intervention and surgery. Well, here we are on the first paper, the culprit shock. Uh, I, I remember this story a little bit. Uh, when we began to see papers that in patients with acute myocardial infarction, multivessel disease, perhaps it was better to revascularize totally, not only the culprit lesion, but also the other lesions that were significant. And actually, this came out in the guidelines. Mm -hmm. Everybody appeared to be moving in that direction. And all of a sudden, right. we have the group that are presenting the paper today, one year follow-up. They have the data at 30 days of follow-up. just didn't work so well. So guidelines were then changed. They went back. You should not do it. And now we have, well, maybe let's wait for a year. The results of the culprit shock were bad at one month, but what happened at one year? So let's, let's go into the study. In fact, the, um, the culprit shock was presented by Dr. Thiel from the University of Leipzig. You might know him. Yes. <laughs> and actually, the question here uh, is quite fascinating. We are dealing with over 700 patients that actually um, um, were entered into the study either with a culprit lesion only, PCI, or immediate multivessel PCI. The primary endpoint, death or renal replacement therapy at 30 days. This was already presented, but we will recapitulate in a moment. Uh, Pre-specified second, uh, secondary endpoints at one year included death from any cause, recurrent myocardial infarction, repeat revascularization, rehospitalization for congestive heart failure. Well, let's see actually what happened. At 30 days, and we already know this data, the, um, the patients um, who were treated with single, um, just addressing only the culprit lesion, the primary endpoint occurred in 45% of these patients, where if the, all the lesions were approached, was close to 55%. So let's remember about 10 points of difference in favor of being much more conservative in doing PCI of the culprit lesion. So what happened in one year? Making the long story short, that gap in mortality decreased a little bit into six points of difference. So a little bit better than the 30 days, but still there is a difference in mortality. And then what, um, what actually I, find, I found interesting, the repeat revascularization uh, and rehospitalization was significantly higher in the group that was treated only on the uh, culprit lesion. So in the conclusion of this paper that was published uh, simultaneously in the New England Journal of Medicine a couple of days ago, the conclusions are as follows. Among patients with acute myocardial infarction and cardiogenic shock, the risk of death or renal replacement therapy at 30 days was lower with culprit lesion only. And mortality did not differ significantly between the two groups at one year of follow-up. We talk about mortality six points of difference compared with 10 points at 30 days. So let me ask you, Deepak, you are going to have tomorrow a patient in your cat lab with three vessel disease, and the patient is in shock. What are you going to do? I'm going to follow the study. So it's very different than my preconceived beliefs. That sort of patient with multivessel disease, maybe the LAD is occluded. That's the culprit lesion, but there's a 90% mid-RCA, 80% uh, distal circ. If they were in shock, my practice had been to open it all up. Of course, do the LAD culprit first, but then go after the other lesions in the belief that that was going to help that patient in shock by perhaps perfusing the sort of uh, border zones of ischemia. It made lots of sense. There was lots of observational data that supported it, uh, even some uh, analyses out of randomized data sets. So it's what I did. It's what most of my colleagues were doing. But, you know, here's a well-done randomized clinical trial. The 30-day endpoint was quite <coughs> definitive. And even at a year, mortality is still going in the wrong direction. That is, it's still favoring the culprit-only strategy. So moving forward, what I'm going to do is treat that LAD lesion. And then the other two lesions, I'm going to resist temptation, leave them alone in the middle of the night as I'm dealing with this sick shock patient. And then tomorrow or the next day, if I need to bring them back because they're not doing well, I'll do so. 
from all the previous studies, most of them actually were multi-vessel disease, but not patients in shock. I only know one study was a registry. It was not randomized, pointing out that perhaps doing everything was better, but was a registry. It's not correct? Yes, but this is a, a different situation. These patients are in shock, and yeah. uh, if you go into trouble in the middle of your PCI on the, on the contral lateral artery, the, the patient is going to die. Uh, but, Jules, there's, there's one, one issue I want to be very sure. The patient I just presented, uh, Deepak, is now has three vessel disease and is not in shock. This study is not answering that question. What would you do? If he's not in shock, and uh, uh, I think it's uh, um, easy lesions to treat in, in the same setting, yeah. I would probably do it, uh, just to avoid another trip to the patient, uh, to, 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 to the cat lab. Uh, in, in, in shock, uh, uh, I would resist uh, the temptation, of course, uh, yeah. and, and the patient would come back to the cat lab for the next lesions. And there is one more thing which is, uh, I think, interesting in this paper, is that these pa this patients uh, in, the, in the group where we have the, the culprit uh, uh, lesion only treated had more uh, heart failure. Uh, and and the, the difference was significant. And I think this is because most of these patients survived initially and they had heart yeah. failure later. Um, uh, but this is quite interesting. The, the survivors uh, had more heart failure in the good group of this study. Yeah, Dr. Borges, what do you think about all of this? As a surgeon, are you watching these guys, what they are doing, right or wrong? <laughs> yeah, of, of course. You know, Holger Thieler, the, the first author, is a friend and colleague of mine. And um, it seems like a logical strategy to me for people that are in shock because they have multi-organ problems and um, more uh, uh, contrast dye load is obviously going to have some effects on the kidney that are not such an issue for patients that are not in shock. And the heart failure, the increased heart failure may be just that the people that wouldn't have survived before are surviving. And that's why you, you may, may be an explanation why you have more heart failure in the culprit lesion uh, group. Uh, for, for me, the re increased repeat re revascularization is not necessarily a bad thing because it's in the whole picture a, a, a staged approach to the patient. And that to me physiologically makes sense. Irina, I have a question. Uh... You know, um, I reviewed the previous paper, there was a registry, you know, and in patients with shock, and it appeared to be positive. And here we have a randomized trial. So it's just for to, to, to really elaborate into the difference between registries and observational studies and, and, and trials that are done properly. Well, exactly. That's uh, the usual problem. We have a registry or observational cohort study and we receive positive results. We perform randomized controlled trial and the results are somewhat different. And now we are facing the problem of interpreting these results. Interpreting these results. I actually would like probably to, I would be more interested in looking at the subgroup of these patients because even if it is a shock patient, they are not the same. So there would be patients uh, for whom more extensive intervention would be possible on the day. So I would be interested in identifying yeah. specific subsetting within this mm -hmm. one particular uh, situation um, based on the results of this trial and including the registry results, whether we can tease out that someone could the, be treated. The question is going to be whether other trials will be possible to be carried out here after the results of this study, but you are, you are absolutely correct. Maybe going back to this same study, maybe some, some subgroups could be elicited. Yeah, that's what's... Uh, I mean, you've got to give credit to these investigators because it's tough to enroll shock patients yeah. in yeah. a randomized clinical yeah. it trial. It is very difficult to recruit these patients, very of difficult. course, and yeah. to repeat these studies. It's uh, OK, so uh, this study is changing our minds of how to treat patients with acute myocardial infarction and shock.